Good morning, everybody. This is Kashyap Saharana, your host for today's conference. I warmly welcome all of you to the second day of fourth international conference on life and chemical sciences, organized by I M Group of researchers. Today we go on board on a journey of collaboration and knowledge sharing, bringing together young and passionate researchers from around the globe. Our platform, after one year of dedication, has hosted three international conferences, six webinars. Now we are driving into book chapters and 19 review articles, with 98 authors reflecting our commitment to excellence, and we contributed to social causes like flood relief fund and Palestine relief fund. I would like to express my gratitude to the remarkable individuals who have played pivotal roles in our success. Dr. Fahmi Dajwin, the executive director of and patron in chief from Bahaudin Zakia University, Multan, and Dr. Adnan, our director from University of Sawat, who have been actively involved. I extend my deepest appreciation to the honorable Professor Dr. Memuna Ghafoor Shahid, who serves as patron and co-patron as well as our esteemed team members, as Azul Islam, Mushtaq Ahmed. Ms. Faiza, Dr. Sadia Bano, Ms. Aksa Iqbal, Safia Khan, Dr. Sara Junaid, Maham Iqbal, Ms. Arij Iqbal, Atir Naim, and myself as well. Together, we leave the, this dynamic organization with unwavering dedication. Currently, I am doing PhD in Chemistry from East China University of Science and Technology, Shanghai. So, as a doctoral researcher myself, I am excited to be a part of this vibrant conference. I'm very grateful to all of you for joining us today. We will be shortly starting our conference, so if anyone from your friends is missing, please inform them to join quickly as we are all set for the virtual stage for our dynamic and inspiring conference. So let's start with our, our session with a few verses of Holy Quran. So I would request Mr. Idris Ahmed to please join for the recitation. Uh, I am audible, Tim. Uh, yes, you are audible. Oh, okay. Aaud billahi min al-shaytan al-wajim. Bismillahi al-Rahman al-Rahim. Iqra bism Rabbika al-ladhi khalaq. خلق الإنسان من علق اقرأ وربك الأكرم الذي علم بالقلم علم الإنسان ما لم يعلم in the name of Allah the most gracious the most merciful read with the name of your Lord who created everything he created man from a clot of blood Read and your Lord is the most gracious who imparted knowledge by means of the pen. He taught men what he did not know. Sadaq Allahul Azim. Jazakallah Idris. Now we will play national anthem. Yeah. 
Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great honor that we invite the distinguished engineer master, an accomplished engineer in ecology and biodiversity management, and the director, academic of Ecoastron, Sri Lanka International Network. With two master's degree in pursuing her second PhD at Beijing First University, her extensive contributions to ecoastronomy and international research make her an invaluable guest speaker. Join us in welcoming her as she shares insights at our conference. Please, ma'am, and your master, it's over to you. Well, thank you so much for this uh, great introduction and also for this uh, valuable invitation. And if you allow me first, I want you to confirm if you can see my slide. Let me just select it. Can you see it? Yes, ma'am, we can see it. A spool. All right. So let's get started. First thing first, I would like to introduce myself to all of you. I'm Majdawa Titan from Morocco. I'm engineer in ecology and biodiversity management, as well as I am the director academic of Ecostrom Sri Lanka since 2020. I'm also conducting my second PhD in e in Beijing Forestry University School of Ecology and Nature Conservation as well as I am a very active member of the EUCN in two committees, the Committee of Education and Communication, as well as the Committee of Ecosystem Management. And today, dear all, we are going to talk about a very interesting and valuable topic, which is the seasonal variation impact on habitat selection of the Sichuan snub nose monkey case study of Tanjiaha National Nature Reserve in China. So actually this part of my research is based on my second master degree that I have get in 2021. So let's discover what is this research part all about. First thing first, I'm gonna give you a brief introduction about this uh, case study, as well as I'm gonna share with you some brief methodological aspects that we have used for this part only. As well, I'm gonna share with you the results and we are going to discuss definitely these results and by the end i'm gonna share with you the conclusion and the recommendation that we have observed now when it comes to the primate species all around the globe we also know that nearly half of all the primate species face high level of extinction risk and when it comes to the Sichuan snub nose monkey it's a very unique type of case not only because it is a very primate endemic to China, but because it's also listed as an, an endangered species by the International Union for the Conservation of Nature. Now, when it comes to our species of monkey, it's actually been observed to be currently occurred in three isolated temperate type of mountains forest in China. Uh, we are talking about totally uh, the uh, the size of this population it's approximately 22,000 individuals the habitat used and also the deforestation and land like uh, land uh, conservation i mean land conversion and the land use the not well land use have actually caused a major threat to this species and to other species of monkeys, to be honest, all around the globe. So let's dive deep in uh, our topic today. Why we are conducting this part of research? Actually, our goal is definitely we want to understand the reasons and the impacts of this seasonal variation of our group of monkeys habitat selection we want to know also the seasonal variation impacts and how these specific group of monkeys have some specific habitat like preferences and why because all of this element is gonna help us to have a clear idea on how to propose and to create a protection plan to protect this uh, group of uh, monkeys habitat preferences so as as we have already mentioned our like goals for this research let right now discover where we are we have conducted this uh, study 
research. As I mentioned, we have conducted this research in south of China in a city called Sichuan. It's a beautiful city, gorgeous city, very high quality uh, diversity is uh, monitored there. There is a lot of type of uh, of like high quality research is conducted right now in Sichuan. And in Sichuan, as you can see in this map, we have went to a place called Tanjiahe National Nature Reserve. As you have seen, this Tanjiahe is located actually in the northwest corner of the Tinchuan County. Now, this area actually have now a growth to approximately to 282 kilometers square after 2001. I need also to highlight something very important. Now, when it comes to this part of our research, we have used a very simple and very valuable type of methodology. We have said, wait, for this type of research, we need only to conduct and to collect data about 12 habitat selection variables, which is slope degree, aspect, altitude, canopy density, we have the habitat type, we have the water source distance, slope position, the average dBH uh, of the trees, slope shape, scrap coverage, average trees height, and tree density. That data were collected actually for a maximum of 5 to 20 consecutive and complete a day. We are talking about six hours a day. We are working each day to con co collect this data and record it. The survey actually were conducted and the data were collected from two years. We are talking here about 2010 till 2011. Now, let's discover also how we have processed this data. To process this data, we have used the measurement that will allow us to see the preferences, uh, preferences of the Sichuan golden snub nose monkey's habitat. We have selected two coefficients. We are talking about the van der Plaag selection coefficient, WE, and the Scavia selection index. We are talking about EI. And as you can see here, the equations that represent these two coefficients. And also we have used the multiple regression analysis to actually see whether there are association between the variables actively or there is any type of significant differences. We also have used the GPS to, to record where are the, the location of our group of monkeys every single day, every single season, every single a year. Those GPS um, like records, we have used them to create a map to see the range of the monkeys and where are they are located every single day during every single season and every single year. Those data also have helped us to conduct analysis which are going to give us a very strong idea about which, which are the very strong variables that have impacted our snub nose monkeys habitat selection. We are talking about here about the analysis of the principal component. All the statistical, an statistical analysis have been conducted using the SPSS 15 for Windows and the R software. With that being said, let's get also let let get also like highlight something very important. All the habitat sampling have done via a plot semi randomly actually located to represent all the vegetation type which we have found on every single habitat selected by those group of monkeys. And also because of the semi variable difference uh, measurement standards may proceed different results and to remove this type of error we have actually uh, found a very important uh, solution that's why we have found the importance for this study to make specific division for each type of uh, ecological factors as follow as you can see here every single variable have we have created a significant type of uh, measurement to uh, help us uh, not have a significant high type of error during our calculation
population. This statistical analysis actually will measure and provide us with a very deep understanding and give us a very clear uh, indication of the correlation between all these variables and the monkey's habitat selection. And that will help us understand how this group of monkeys selection their habitat through season and through years. Now let's discuss the results, shall we? Here, as you can see, we have two tables. These two tables is actually representing the microhabitat selection index of our group of monkeys in the winter season, winter season of two years, winter season of 2010 and winter season of 2011. What we have observed actually is very significant and very important. We have found that our group of Sichuan snub nose monkey have selected different type of habitat during the same season but in different years as you can see here winter of 2010 we compared with the winter of 2011 we have different type of slopes different type of of habitat we have the, even the slope shape have changed the elevation have changed that is very important so let's see if this group of monkey have did the same thing during the other seasons as you can see here the representative of the distribution of this group of monkey in the maps but let's see during the spring season of 2010 and the spring season of 2011 There is, okay, hopefully you guys can hear me right now. Yes, ma'am, we can hear you. Okay, if there is any, any like, uh, things happening, just, like, stop me and uh, inform me, okay? Sure, ma'am. Excellent. So, as I mentioned here, you can see, we have here, uh, we have here observed the same thing that we have observed for the winter season. If you can see the spring season of 2010, this group of monkeys have changed their habitat aspect completely when you compare it to the spring season of 2011. Aspects have changed the slope degree till the 11th type of variable have been changed. Now, let's see, as you can see in the maps here, the distribution have been changed, obviously. Now, is this happened also during the summer season? Yeah. During the summer season of 2010, our group of monkeys have selected a different slope degree, type of habitat, slope shape, and distance from the water source. Same things have happened in 2011. As you can see, here is the map that you can like uh, see clearly where these group of monkeys have been distributed. Now, is this also happened during the autumn season? Well, at this point, I believe you guys have the <laughs> answer already. Yeah, this group of monkeys, even during the autumn season of 2010, compared to 2011, they did have changed their habitat based on the aspect, again, the type of habitat, the slope shape, the canopy, the average height of trees. This actually analysis have made us very confused we want to know how, we want to know why. So this is why we have went to much more deeper analysis to get much more information. Maybe we will understand why this group of monkey is changing their habitat even in the same season, but between different years. Let's see what we have observed here. We have the trees diversity selection in 2010 and 2011. As you can see, the green color is, is um, representing the trees diversity selection in 2010. And the purple color is representing the trees diversity selection by our group of monkeys during 2011. What we have noticed, 
we have noticed very important things. We have here winter season and spring season, okay? So we have noticed very important facts. First fact is that the uh, trees selected in 2011, there was high number, diversified number of trees. If you compare it by the number of the diversified trees in, selected by our group of monkeys in 2010. This is also correct for the spring season. The number of diversified trees that have been selected for our group of monkeys have been increased in 2011 compared in 2010. Is this happened also in the, uh, in the winter, in the summer and autumn season? Guess what? Yeah, exactly. In 2011, the diversity of the trees that have been selected compared with the year of 2010 was completely different. And also in, in the autumn of 2011, this group of monkeys have selected much more diversified type of trees than the trees that they have selected in the autumn of 2010. These actually have led us to be much more confused. Now, we didn't have only uh, variables that have been changed from season to season, but as well, the trees diversity have been, selection have been changed from season to season. At, the, at this point, we need the principal component analysis to give us the mean principal component, the strongest variables that actually impacted our group of monkeys habitat selection. So with that being said, as you can see here, we have the winter season of 2010 and we have the spring season of 2010. We have noticed that the PC1 and 2 of the winter season of 10, which are actually the altitude and the water source distance, have impacted our group of monkeys so habitat selection but if you see in the spring season our group of monkeys have been impacted by the pc1 2 and 3 which are the altitude the water source distance and the tree's height all right let's see much more in the summer and the autumn season of 2010 we have noticed that pc1 2 which are the uh, altitude and water source distance have impacted their habitat selection in the summer. Now, in the autumn, there is uh, there is a principal component one, two, and three, which is altitude, water source distance, and tree height. Those principal components have impacted our snub-nosed monkeys' habitat selection. Now, when it comes to 2011 winter and spring season you can see that the, uh, the PC1, 2, and 3 for both seasons in 2011 have led this group of monkey to select this habitat and to reject this habitat. When it comes to PC1, 2, and 3, we're talking about the altitude, the water source distance, and the tree height. Now, when it comes to the season of summer during 2011, not only summer but also the autumn season, we, if you can see here, we have found the principal components one and two, they are the mean variables that have lead this group of monkeys to select this habitat. We are talking about the altitude and the water source distance. As a conclusion, what we have understand from this part of our research Actually, we have understood that the ecosystem selected by our group of monkeys varied significantly between the seasons, even during the same season of the two consecutive years, we have changed in the habitat selection. And also we have noticed that the trees selection during all the seasons of both years, we are talking about 2010 and 2011, were found to change from one season to another. As, a, as we have already proven, and for a year to another. In other words, we documented the important tree selection variables for our species. So we believe that our species actually changed its habitat because they wanted much more diversified trees, because trees are not only 
a, a, like a place where they live because these species they didn't like to stay in the ground they live in in the trees they move in in the trees if you can find them in the ground it only for a few seconds i was very lucky to see them in the ground for a few seconds because it's dangerous for them there is a dangerous type of predator that can catch them but they selected the trees not only for protection and habitat but also for food source because they eat the leaves of the trees they eat it also the 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 tree coverage they are actually the trees are the main source for them to survive so the principal component analysis have helped us to understand much more deeper what is going on on the brain of our a smart snub nose group of monkeys actually these principal components have given us some strong facts on which variable are most responsible for the variable like the variation of habitat selection of our roxelana group of monkeys for instance the altitude distance from the water source and the trees uh, high were found to be the main factors for the habitat selection now, as a recommendation, and this is not only for our snub nose monkey, but all monkeys everywhere, the controlling, controlling the deforestation is the most important step that needs to be taken seriously in the consideration during the process of making legislation, laws, and regulation. This is very important. And we can't protect wildlife without protecting first their nature, their habitat, and the ev like and every single uh, variable found in the monkey's habitat have its own direct impact and effect on the species behavior ecology. Now, to talk generally, monkey's protection must be based on the habitat conservation, and this is my last type of recommendation if truly you want to conserve every single species of monkeys you want clearly to protect first the habitat and to conserve it even from the human noise and interaction as well as we have finished today our uh, our uh, very interesting uh, research part of research i would like also to invite you to read all our uh, publication we have published many books many many research paper i am specifically uh, like uh, very focused on ecological aspect as well as my uh, partner dr arvind ravipano sumanart now he is the ceo of ecostronomy sri lanka he is very uh, like devoted to publish articles and books about paleontology astro like astrobiology and also some very valuable geological factors you guys if you are interested about this type of research do not hesitate to go and check in our research gate or to contact us for much more uh, like cooperation in the future if there is any chances also we are conducting live meetings to talk about what we have already conducted what we are preparing to conduct and to discover other scientists and multi-diversified type of uh, researchers we we would like to exchange with them so you guys if you feel that you have something to share with us do not hesitate to contact us in our platforms as you can see here research gate Facebook, YouTube, or even a business, our uh, WhatsApp business account, or our professional business emails, or our website, or you can also join us in our channel. I would recommend you to screenshot this page, so then you guys, if you want to contact us for any further collaboration, you are more than welcome. And with this group, I am very happy to announce that by December, we are going to organize a very valuable type of meeting to give you much more information about the opportunities that uh, that like you can find here in China. Hopefully you guys can join and can I enjoy it. With that being said, thank you very much for this amazing session. If there is any question, do not hesitate to contact me and to ask me. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Angelo Master. I extend my deepest gratitude for the honor of your presence in the wealth of expertise you have generously shared. Thank your you. Your illuminating dear. insights have not only enriched our understanding, but have served as a guiding light for all the participants. 
Your presentation was a masterpiece, a symphony of knowledge that resonated with everyone present. We are genuinely thankful for the immense value you brought to our conference, leaving an indelible mark of inspiration. Your contribution has elevated the discourse and enriched collective wisdom of our gathering. With that most appreciation, respect, regard, we express our heartfelt thanks for the profound impacts you have made on this event. In light of our time constraints, we warmly invite active participation by encouraging at least one participant to contribute a thought-provoking question, fostering a brief yet engaging discussion. Don't hesitate to raise your hand and we will gladly extend an invitation for your valuable input. Your involvement is greatly appreciated. Absolutely. Thank you so much for that uh, comment about my presentation. And you guys, do not hesitate to ask any question. I'm here to answer your question and to light up these type of subjects. Because I would like all of you, if you are interested, to conduct those type of research. So maybe we're going to have much more information about how these uh, species, not only snub nose monkey, but you can consider also the same type of uh, method to analyze much more type of uh, behavior ecology. Thank you so much, dear Mahmoud. Thank you very much. If there is any type of questions, now it's the time. Otherwise, I have to go <laughs> because there is other valuable type of uh, uh, professors and doctors, they are going to highlight much more information. So this is the time for you to ask me questions. Otherwise, I will have to go. All right. I believe there is no other questions. Thank you so much, Dirol. Wish you all the best. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Welcome, um, Angina Master. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Uh, I want to uh, invite Dr. Adnan, who is director of IM Group of Researchers and always being a great sport for us, for his conclusive remarks. Assalamu alaikum, dear valued guests, participants, and esteemed team. It is the fourth international conference on life and chemical sciences with the theme From Lab to Life Emerging Trends in Biological and Chemical Sciences Come to an End. I want to express my sincere gratitude and pride for the success of this event. On behalf of the organizing committee, I want to thank our guest speakers, participants, and especially the dedicated team that worked hard to make this conference happen. Our goal focused on providing valuable education and raising awareness through research has come to life through the lively discussion and knowledge sharing during these enlightening days. Organized by the IM group of researchers, this conference provided a common ground for the students, researchers, scientists and professors in life sciences and chemical sciences to share insights, experiences and the latest advancement in their field. The objective we set for this conference were not just met but surpassed thanks to active involvement of everyone present. We successfully encouraged collaboration between experts in biological sciences and chemistry opening doors to innovative solutions for global challenges, discussions on healthcare, drug discovery, sustainable practices, and the exploration of chemistry of nature and biomolecular sciences have undoubtedly advanced scientific understanding, paving the way for future breakthroughs. I want to express my appreciation for the commitment shown by participants in promoting ethical chemical research, environmental awareness, and safety measures. This conference has not only been a platform for an intellectual exchange, but also a catalyst for building a community of responsible researchers dedicated to making positive impact on society. Uh, special thanks to our distinguished guest speakers whose expertise enriched the conference, and to every participant who actively contributed to this the, to the discussion. My gratitude also goes to the organizing team whose careful planning and ensure the smooth flow of events. Uh, 
I am confident that the knowledge shared and connection made during this conference will go beyond these walls and make a lasting impact on the laboratories, classrooms, and research institutions represented here. As we part ways, let's carry forward the spirit of collaboration, innovation, and ethical responsibility that defined the fourth International Conference on Life in Chemical Sciences. Uh, thank you all for your unwavering support, and I look forward to future endeavors that continue to push the boundaries of scientific exploration and social impact. Thank you all.